Well, we've worked through a few examples of circular and linear patterns and even mirroring, but sometimes you may want a little bit more from your patterns. That's what this video is about now. All right, so let's start by creating... <clears throat> Whew. All right, so let's start by creating a sketch, and I'll do so on our ZX plane. I'll make a line here, a vertical line, and another line. I'll make sure that this line that I've drawn is also vertical. And then do the same thing over here, there, and there. We're going to right click and make these reference figures. I can make these equal if I wish. Let's make a scale model of this here. Uh, we'll go something like 10. All right, we'll maybe scale this easy, an, an inch equals a foot or something like that. So we'll say uh, six and three, something like that, right? We just wanna make a simple balcony. I wanna make this vertical as well. And there we are, okay. So what I can do is I can make a spline and make kind of a fun, modern looking balcony. But you may see that our balcony won't be tangent. So I've got this way of drawing splines that will be tangent to lines. And that uses these construction lines over here. And what I'll do is come down here and say spline by control points. And I'll click a line that is tangent to where I want to be tangent to. And now the controls are such that when I click both ends of my construction line, I can be tangent anywhere that I'd like. So we'll deactivate that sketch. We'll extrude. I'll say something like one inch, right? We'll make another plane. And we'll say that this is maybe three I'll go four and a half. And from here, I'll create a sketch on the plane that I've just made. We'll project this edge, this line, and this edge here. Maintain association just like that. Go in the XY plane. And I'm going to make a little banister right there. We'll give this the same dimension, four and a half. We'll make this something like 0.5. And we'll make a simple half circle arc, although it is possible to make this very ornate. We'll deactivate that and we'll do a sweep and I'll sweep my sketch down my path, just like that. So far, so good. Now let's make a plane. We'll offset this 0.25. And so we're 0.25 into our little patio here. We'll activate a sketch. So far, everything is smooth. There's no barriers to us being able to make a great patio here. We'll give this a dimension and I'm going to give it a dimension of say 0.2 and we'll taper this out maybe one degree. I'll have this line be vertical. We'll choose coincident here. We'll choose coincident here. Maybe we'll give that 0.25, just like that. So we'll deactivate the sketch. Let's do a revolve. And we'll select our axis right there. So we've got a little support for our pillars, but now we have a problem. <clears throat> do I want to revolve all of these little banister supports all the way around? And how would I even figure out how to evenly space them 
because I used a spline profile and it would be really hard to calculate even spacing along there. Well, that is where our feature in today's video comes in, the path pattern. It helps you do the impossible with just one click. So first off, I'll want to make a path. And to do that, I'll activate a sketch on the base of my banister. And again, project this edge, this edge, and actually I'll leave it there. So we'll maintain association there. And next, I'll make a line and I'll simply dimension my line off of this edge to be 0.25 above. So we'll deactivate the sketch. Now, this is gonna follow the path that we've made when we choose path pattern. So I click on path pattern and it says, what do I want to pattern for features? I want to pattern this little revolve that I did. And then, what path do I want to choose? Well, I'll go over to my tree and click on the path that I just sketched out. And you can see it has four evenly spaced banister supports, but of course we want much more on a balcony. Let me try 25. And sure enough, 25 looks about right. So I can have my modern, contemporary, curvy, swoopy balcony, and I can have my evenly spaced supports. Very nice. And path pattern really is that simple. Now another thing worth mentioning is I have some design intent on one of my features that I wish to pattern. So if I go to add a path pattern to this, and in fact, let's talk about that design intention just a little bit. I have this going to geometry and I have it terminating at this angled plane, giving my extrusion an angled face instead of a flat one. So when I go to make a pattern, I'll say I have this feature that I want to pattern and I want it to go down this path, but I want to keep the design intent where every pattern terminates at the same plane. Well, I can do that simply by turning off this pattern geometry. And now they all terminate at the same plane and the design intent is carried over from one feature to all the rest that I'm patterning. And that's how we do path patterns. Stay tuned. We're going to cover even more topics in the next videos.